thread the machine, the first thing we need to do is wind a bobbin. And to wind a bobbin, we need to retrieve the bobbin. So take off the removable storage compartment and open up this door and put your finger behind this latch on the bobbin holder and pull it toward you. And hold the latch with two fingers and pull the whole thing out. Tilt it to release the bobbin from the bobbin holder. Your machine uses Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins, so if you want to buy more bobbins later on, make sure that they're Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. Now set your thread spool on the spool pin and then place the thread spool cap on top of that to hold your spool in place. To wind a bobbin, we're going to follow this colored, dashed threading path marked on the top of your machine. So we'll take the end of our thread, holding it with two hands, first snap it into this first thread guide like it shows you on your diagram here, and then bring it like this around the bobbin winding tension disc and pull the thread to make sure it fits snugly underneath the disc. That's very important. Now take the loose end of your thread and place it from the center out through one of the holes of your bobbin and then hold the thread up above the bobbin and set the bobbin on the bobbin winding spindle. Hold the thread tail above the bobbin, push it to the right, and step on the foot control to begin winding. You can stop to trim the thread tail just above the bobbin, like so, and then step on the foot control again to resume winding. You can stop winding any time you feel like you have enough thread on your bobbin for your project, or step on the foot control again to just resume winding. You can continue winding until the bobbin is full. It will stop automatically when it is full. Push it to the left, lift it off the bobbin winding spindle, and cut the thread. Now that we've wound the bobbin, we're ready to insert the bobbin. Place your bobbin into the bobbin holder. Pull the thread to make sure that the bobbin is turning clockwise. If it's turning counterclockwise, that's not correct. You'll need to take it out and turn it around so that as you pull the thread, it's turning in a clockwise direction. Now take this thread and bring it into this slot on the side of your bobbin holder. And then bring it underneath this little metal tab, tug it just slightly so that the thread clicks in place between these two little arms on this metal tab. Now hold the latch. This finger pointing up, bring it to the machine, push it in, and release the latch. Now that we've wound a bobbin and inserted it into the machine, we're ready to thread the top of the machine. And there are two things you need to do before you do anything at the top of the machine with the thread, and that is to first raise the presser foot lifter, that's very important, and then turn the hand wheel toward you so that the needle is raised up and that you see the thread take-up lever come up here so that it's completely visible. After winding a bobbin, the top of the machine probably looks something like this. So we're going to take the thread completely out of the bobbin winding threading path. And now we're going to follow the needle threading path, which is marked with this gray solid line. So holding the thread in your right hand and the loose end in the left, snap it into this first guide shows you here, and then bring it around this thread guide, slipping it between these two small plates of that guide, and then bring it down around this U-turn, up to the right side of the take-up lever, and then bring it left, and then pull forward so that the eye of the take-up lever is threaded. And then 
bring the thread down to the needle area. Now bring your thread into this thread guide above the needle, slip it in from the right hand side toward the left, and now we're going to thread the needle and we can use the built-in needle threader. So this is your needle threader lever and as you bring it down you can pass your thread around this first guide and then push it all the way down until these prongs are fitting around the needle. There's a little tiny hook that comes into the eye of the needle. You're going to place your thread in like so and then lightly hold your thread with your right hand as you release with your left hand and you'll see a small loop at the back of the needle. So grab that little loop to pull the remainder of your thread tail through and your needle is threaded. And now we're going to bring up the bobbin thread. So to do that, continue holding the thread with your left hand as you turn the hand wheel toward you to lower and then raise the needle, lightly pulling the thread to the left as you do so and you'll see a loop come up from the bottom. This is your bobbin thread. Grab that thread, pull it all the way through until the bobbin thread comes all the way out through the hole in your needle plate, and then place both threads underneath the presser foot, close the cover, and then replace the removable storage compartment. Now let's test the stitch to make sure that we've threaded correctly. To test our stitch, we're gonna use a straight stitch with a medium stitch length with our stitch width dial set to zero. Place your fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and step on the foot control to start sewing. When you come to the end of the fabric, turn the hand wheel toward you till the needle is all the way up and just begins to come down. Raise the presser foot lifter and cut your threads with the thread cutter at the side of the machine. It looks good on the top looks good on the back as well. So now we know that we've threaded the machine correctly. When you sew, if you see big loops on the back side of your fabric, it's actually an indication that you've threaded the top of the machine incorrectly. So remove the thread from the top of the machine and re-thread the machine. Now let's try sewing a seam. This is your needle plate and it has markings on it that are actually seam allowance guidelines in the back side and metric measurements in the front. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance, so I'm going to place my fabric under the presser foot so that the edge of my fabric is lined up with the 5 8 inch guideline. Lower the presser foot lifter and sew forward about two or three stitches. Press and hold the reverse lever to sew in reverse two or three stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew forward again. As you sew, make sure you keep the edge of your fabric lined up with your seam guide. When you come near the end of your fabric, press and hold the reverse lever to sew two or three stitches in reverse again. Release the reverse lever and sew forward to the end of the fabric. Turn the hand wheel toward you to raise the needle all the way up until it just begins to descend. Raise your presser foot lifter and cut your thread. And there we have our seam. We have stitches in reverse at the beginning and end that locks our seam so that the stitches don't come undone as we continue working on our project. For more information about your machine, a full instruction manual is available on the Singer website to view or download anytime.